favorite flex programming we like to call this around here monday motivation slash let's talk in clex we're going to do both today i am so happy to be back in the remar office with the remar team working hard to make sure that you guys get the information that you need if you haven't been a part of our NCLEX Facebook group, you need to join that group because this is testimonial season. This is the winning season. All of the Remar nurses that were with us during seven days of NCLEX, Black Friday. I mean, all of our events, the testimonies are coming in so fast. I am having a hard time keeping up with them. I'd like to share a few now that I'm back home. Did you guys see Jamaica? Did you see the amazingness that happened in Kingston? I hope that you were able to just get a glimpse. I know we show some video, but the class was world record breaking. I, I have never seen an NCLEX review with 700 students. 700 students, have you heard of such a thing? No, only here at Read My Review. This is, this is the season that you need to be a part of this community because the numbers of, I mean, and the, the thing about it for me as an instructor, aloha, aloha. The thing about it for me is an, as an instructor is that after the class, the class was fantastic. I mean, the love that we, that we got shown, the team, everybody, the love that we got shown <laughs> in Kingston was so genuine. And it was, it was really um, humbling to be on that stage in front of hundreds of nursing students. Um, but after we got to spend some time uh, with the nursing students, we had the prayer booth going. And so I was able to pray with nursing students and get hugs. I got so many hugs that day that it just really spoke to what sets Remar Review apart. And yes, we have great NCLEX information, but the, the genuine love and connection of the nursing students to myself, to the team was phenomenal. It was an amazing class just because of the people that were there. I mean, that's what made the class great. And of course we were in Jamaica so that on top of the, the location was just, oh, it was so good. Um, and I just want to thank everybody that was a part of it. If you're in the Facebook group, you know that we are planning to continue to take the show on the road. So we're actually looking to find out where we'll be next. We are going to do Remar Review Live and some more cities coming up. I mean, it's what we will be doing in the spring, in the summer. And so we're asking in the Facebook group, where do we go next? Where do we go next to shout out, participate in that poll so we can get to plan it. We can get to plan it. Candace says, come to Michigan. Um, hi, hi nurse uh, Obina coming in from Seattle, Washington. Oh my goodness. Um, congratulations, congratulations. Yes, this is the season of expecting if you are part of the Remar family, I know you're seeing those testimonials. So again, this is Monday Motivation. Hey, if it's your first time watching a Monday Motivation or a Let's Talk NCLEX, let me introduce myself. My name is Regina Callion. I am the number one NCLEX instructor on this planet. And I like to um, just say welcome. I was expecting you here today because this is the time where during your week, you can get focused. Monday, the beginning of the week is the perfect opportunity for you to rededicate yourself to your passing NCLEX goals. And so this is what we do around here. Um, I want to tell you, I'll be reading some, my phone is on. My phone is on because I'll be reading some things from my phone that the Remar nurses said, and it just really stuck with me. Um, but people just keep texting, it's okay. So also, one of the things that we're doing for 2019 is here at Remar Review, we are giving back. And the way we're doing that is if you find yourself in a position where you have made up in your mind to invest in your education. When it comes to NCLEX, we will be paying for you to take your NCLEX exam. And you guys know it's not a cheap 
fee. It's hundreds of dollars. So we will be helping you to cover that fee. We're picking one new winner every week in order to do that. And so yesterday I picked the winner that uh, that will be announced today at the end of this show. And I'm going to be really excited to say her name because it is it is a remark nurse. OK, uh, nurse. And body. OK, so. I told you guys that this was the season of testimonials. And so I have to shout out some of our newest Remar nurses. And this might be you. I don't know. But OK, so Nurse Ivy, she put this on the Facebook page and it says, I would like to say thank you, Remar. Thank you so much for helping me to pass my exam on my first try. Mm. I stopped at 265. I almost gave up. I almost gave up when I reached 150 plus items and doubted myself about the results. But I didn't give up. I still continue to answer the questions the best way I can. And that's really what it's all about. You're just bringing your best. She says, Every day I watch your videos, I read your quick facts and answer the 40 item questions in the quick facts. So she maybe she must be talking about the five star. I even completed your six week challenge, pal, and completed seven days of NCLEX 2018. Awesome. Uh, your material is great and wonderful. Remar is a blessing. Continue to bless other nurses, Remar. Believe in yourself and ask for his guidance. You can do it. God bless us all. I love those words when I read them last night because this is just a true testimony. Their time out. I mean, these nurses are taking their time out to report back to their family that, hey, if I can do it, you can do it. So it gets better, it gets better. Let me show you guys this one. Oh, we got a nurse here. I'm gonna show you her name. Okay, so Nurse Lexi, she put a video up in our Facebook group, um, Nurse Nurse Lexi Ter Terrero, mm, am I saying that right, Terrero, RN? Yes, third time was the charm for her. She actually, uh, put a short video up, but she passed her exam, NCLEX RN exam, and just 91 questions. Which, if you guys know NCLEX, that's pretty much in and out in terms of the minimum. The minimum is 75. So she just got a couple more over the, the minimum, and the exam determined this girl knows her stuff. So she says, content is key. Um, God is able. I just want to read. I just want to read something that she had also wrote. Um, she put this in the group. This is so surreal. I pass. Once I found out, I cried. I was thanking God, felt his presence. I owe it all to him and Remar products. Um, and she says, all I can say, um, all I can say, all the subjects on quick facts and activity book were on my NCLEX was the third time testing. I passed with 91 questions, OMG. Now I understand that without God, nothing is possible. I like that because she 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 twists it around. She says, without God, nothing is possible. You have to have God. God is able. Also, a lot of prayer is the key. He will guide you all the way. So thank you. Thank you, Nurse Lexi. You're RN now. Wow. I can't even imagine the feeling um, that you have after failing and then coming back. She shouted out two products. She shouted out the BAM Quick Facts. This is a, a nurse's best friend. Quick Facts for NCLEX when you're studying. Every nurse should have this. If you're watching this and you don't have this book, you need to buy this book. I mean, hands down. This is the companion to your passing NCLEX. She also shouted out the activity book, which you guys know is part of the DVD self-study package. So the activity book is a fun way for you to study when you don't feel like doing questions. 
And if you open up the activity book, you can see that it has like puzzles and matching and charts. This is the only book of its kind. I've, I keep searching, but this activity book that I wrote, there is none other like it. So it's really cool. It's part of the DVD package. Um, so right now I'm just showing you the books in the DVD self-study package. You get your student workbook. You get homework because you got to have homework. You get your activity book. You guys that have this package, let somebody know how great it was. <laughs> um, Candace also says Lexi was part of the 21 day challenge. We do quick facts in depth. So shout out to all the people that are in the uh, Facebook group that are encouraging everybody to study. So this is the DVD package that you can order. It is also referred to lovingly as the six week challenge. Get your license in six weeks when you do this program. Um, let me go on because I have another testimonial that's so good. Uh, this next nurse also used, hey, Nurse Recall, what'd you say? Hi, Regina, great news. I passed my NCLEX at 38 weeks pregnant. Yes, yes, you did it. Anything is possible with God in the midst. Thank you so much, Regina, Mark, and the Remar family. God is amazing. Whew, you just made it. 38 weeks. You wanted to have your license before that baby was born. That's what I'm talking about. That's goal setting right there. Sometimes you just need, some of you guys need that push to get the license, get the license. And so that's why you're here for Monday Motivation. I wanna shout out this next nurse right here. Oh, nurse Sheila Castro Rods. She says, I'm the newest Remar nurse. I love this story. She actually was a repeat, 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 repeat test taker. On her seventh time, she passed her NCLEX. I mean, seven, seven times she passed her NCLEX. Um, and she said this time she would not be denied. And I know I don't have a lot of time. I don't want to keep you guys, but literally her NCLEX journey started in 2016 and she had the Remar products in 2016. She is a nurse representing from Puerto Rico. She brought the package. Um, she took the NCLEX exam. She didn't pass. Hurricane Maria came. She kept testing. I mean, her, her testimonial is phenomenal. It's in the Facebook group. Her mom passed away. She took her exam like three months after her mom passed away. Didn't pass. She couldn't figure out what she was doing wrong. So she literally started taking advice from other people. They told her to do hers. They told her to do this. She was signing up for three-day classes. Still wasn't passing. And at, at the seventh time, she said she had the choice between Kaplan, which she looked at the prices, it was like $500. She didn't have the $500. And she said, but she kept seeing the Remar testimonials. And she said, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Why am I not passing? I've tried everything. She said she had the choice between Kaplan or going back to Remar. And she figured it out. She said, I wasn't doing the daily day challenge. I wasn't doing the day challenge. I was just studying on my own accord. She recommitted herself to that calendar. She did it the day by day. She actually said, uh, I think she said she took eight weeks to do it. I'm not really sure, but she, she committed herself to the study calendar and she said she did everything in the package. She used the daily study calendar, the DVD program. This girl did the seven days of NCLEX. She did the Black Friday. I mean, she did the Monday motivations. She went all in and on her seventh time, she came out with her license. So let's talk about transparency. Let's talk about where you are normally in a place where people are not trying to tell you where they failed. They're not trying to tell you their mistakes. But here you get you get authentic testimonials of people who say, I didn't do it right all the time. I didn't do it right. But when I made a decision that this was all I wanted, I went all in for it. And so now she has her license. Congratulations. Congratulations to our newest Remar nurse. Um, I thank you for that video, too. Pow! So, testimonial season is in full effect. I'm waiting on yours. I'm waiting on yours. This is Monday Motivation. The topic for this Monday is uh, the person in 
control, the person in control. And so when you look at the word control, when you are trying to figure out what does it mean to be in control, to be in control means you're directing a series of events. You are the person who determines how things will go. So for this week, our thought is, who is the person in control? Who is the person in control, right? Because the person in control, the person in control is the person who will ultimately control all aspects of your life. They're gonna control where you work. They're gonna control how you spend your time. They're gonna control what you dream of, what your goals are. They're gonna control your finances and they're gonna control the future, right? Everybody that's planning these steps ultimately will have the last say. So I want you guys to look at this list and I want you to determine who is that person in control of these things in my life? Just take a moment. I mean, it should really be reflective. I wanna see the answers. Who's in control? Who's in control? The person of control. Who's in control of these aspects of your life right now? Everybody really should be answering in the same way, in the same way, the person in control, if you haven't figured it out, is you. It is you. You are in the person, you are the person that, yes, I am. Yes, I am. You are the person in control of all these things. Where you work, that's you. How you spend your time, that's you. You are in control of it. Nobody else is going to come in and tell you, you have to spend the next five minutes thinking or dreaming about these goals. You have to have your own goals, your own ideas about where you want to be. You have to have the standard about what it is you will take and what you will not take. And so I want you guys to put yourselves in the position of control. Now, there's something about being in the position of control. There's something particular that the person in control has to do. Does anybody know what that is? If you're the person in control, what is your responsibility? That's the question. Because I think we all can say, okay, I'm an adult. I'm a free being. I control what I do, what I dream, my future, where I work, all these things. But when you're in control, you are responsible for doing the work. The person in control is the person who does the work. The person who is at the top is the person who has the responsibility to make sure that things go according to what they're supposed to go according to. And so it's not just a matter of saying, oh, I'm in control, but you also have to take the responsibility to say that I am here to do the work. And so this week, these are your tasks. Controlling where you work is going to determine the work that you do, right? Controlling how you spend your time is going to determine the work that you have to do. Your dreams also are going to be determined by the work that you are actively doing. You have to work on these things. Yes, Leo, you have to work on these things. These kind of things, the goals that you, the life that you guys want to have does not happen by accident. It doesn't. It takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of consistent work every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And so for Monday, we're aligning ourselves with the idea that there is a work that must be done, okay? You have to do your best. Yes, God will handle the rest of it, but you have to do your best. You have to do your best. So that's our mindset for this week, guys. You wanna be in control, you gotta do the work. You have to do the work. You have to do the work. There's no easy way around it. Um, the six week challenge is no joke because there's work that must be done. You want to pass NCLEX. And, and this is what I love about our testimonial from Nurse Rods. When she looked at her trajectory of NCLEX, she said it took her 928 questions to pass NCLEX. And that was every all the seven times she added up all the questions that she did. And 
She said, it took me 928 questions to pass NCLEX. The work that had to be done to be successful after 928 questions was no joke. She said um, she spent over $1,400 in test taking fees. She spent over $1,000 in NCLEX material. All of those things required work. None of those things were for free. None of those things were for free. So in our minds, we have to, we have to keep going. We have to keep going. We cannot get tired in doing good. We cannot get tired in doing good. So again, this is the prevailing thought for us this week. Um, and we can look at the testimonials and hear people say, it was not easy, but I did the work and I had the results to prove it. So now let us get into our Let's Talk NCLEX segment. Are you guys ready for NCLEX questions? Yes. Are you guys ready for NCLEX questions? Here we go. We're getting started right this moment. Our first NCLEX question, this was actually on the Facebook page for the post for this week. It says, an eight-year-old is admitted to the hospital with acute fever during the healing phase of the disease process. Which of the following would interest the child the most? Is it option number one, playing, um, sorry, reading a book to the father, two, playing with a doll, three, watching the television alone, or four, playing checkers with a roommate? Again, our scenario here is we have an eight year old um, admitted to the hospital. Which activity is going to be sound? Which activity is going to be most appropriate? for this individual. Oh, I see the answers coming in. I see the answers coming in. We are looking at the choices of reading a book to the father, mm -hmm. playing with a doll. Also, some people think it's number three, watching the television alone, or four, playing checkers with a roommate, playing checkers with a roommate. Tag your friends if they are studying for NCLEX with you also so they can get the answer to this great question. Um, you guys know, you better know those developmental milestones for NCLEX. This is a very, very common type of NCLEX question where they give you the age and they say, boom, pick the activity that is going to be most appropriate to support the learning needs, the play needs of this age group. So the correct answer here, guys, is going to be, some of you picked it, uh-huh. Number four, playing checkers with a roommate. This is the most appropriate. Hi, everybody just joining us. We're talking about developmental milestones for the school age child. This is the most appropriate because if you think about where an eight-year-old child is socially, um, mentally, emotionally, they love to have, they love to have the ability to be able to interact with people. I mean, really, I know I had, um, a, of course, of course, I go over this in the DVD package, but I, um, I had a ton of these questions when I took NCLEX. I mean, just literally, to be honest, I had a ton of developmental milestone questions. And I wished at the time that I had knew a little bit more about them, okay? Because I didn't really, um, I didn't really give too much attention to this topic. And of course, it would be on my NCLEX. Anyhow, I do talk about this in the package because it's so important. But at the age of eight years old, you are more than likely very friendly. And so the, the activities that support your learning needs are going to be the ones that would involve other people. Let me show you this. Okay. So at the eight year old, get out your pens and papers because you do want to take notes on these. Eight years old is a very generic age. The, the general scope would be the school age child. 
the school age child. So you need to know Erickson's, you need to know Piaget's, you need to know how this age group, the school age child really understands death to cover your basis for your exam. So for Erickson's, um, these school age children are in the industry versus inferiority stage. You guys should, uh, you should be kind of familiar with it, even if you don't know the particular details of all of the phases, the industry versus inferiority, the whole scope of it really focuses on the child reflecting to themselves, can I do this? Am I capable of doing something? Am I competent of doing something? Will my parents, will my loved ones be proud of me? Um, they have this industry they want to do, they want to create, they want to show that they have the ability to contribute to society. And so when you look at how that interacts with other people, oh my goodness, does the school age child love to be in competition? Yes, absolutely. Do they love to be in groups? Absolutely, group work is so important. And so here, when you have the school age child, you know that they would love they would love to be um, doing something with a friend or doing something with somebody else. Now, if you look at Piaget's, they are uh, in the concrete operational phase of his development. So with that being said, the school age child is highly focused on justice, right? So in the DVD package, I talk about fair play. I talk about how if you are in the school age group and you're interacting with your, um, your classmates, everybody has to play by the rules. These are not children who are for somebody's doing their own thing. And you guys know if you have children and you're sitting and you're playing Uno or Monopoly or whatever, everybody has to play by the rules or the child will get upset. So they're very concrete in playing by the rules, using logic, um, and it helps them to form structure. It helps them to feel safe. So here, um, here is another, here's another facet of developmental milestones that you want to be familiar with. And you need to have Erickson's and Piaget's pretty much memorized, okay, in terms of what the developmental stage is for the age group. And one more component of developmental milestones is a correct understanding of death, a correct understanding of death. NCLEX can pinpoint you guys to this concept as well. And for the school age child, they are coming out of that magical thinking, right? Where preschoolers, um, they believe in death as something that's reversible, um, something that is temporary, where the school age child, they're getting a more appropriate understanding of the concept of death. They understand that it is irreversible um, and they, they struggle with whether or not it is a punishment, but they have an understanding that it is a final, um, it is a final realization for this life. OK, so that's something that you also want to know. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. So it says I pass my NCLEX, but it's always fun watching Regina. Well, I thank you that I um, can hold some entertainment value to registered nurses and practical nurses. So, yeah. So these are uh, these are the concepts in the mind frame that you want to be thinking about when you're trying to study for these developmental milestones, because they can be really, really tricky. Um, Let's do another NCLEX question. I like this one. Here it is. Which of the following is the most appropriate for the seven to nine years old child? We have options. Number one, developing language skills. Two, increasing fine motor skills like riding a tricycle. Three, explaining rituals. Or four, peer group socialization. Come on with the answer. Come on with the answer. Okay. 
All right. And again, here, I just wrote this question. It was pretty generic. The seven to nine years old really, really will just encompass the school age child. So we're talking here about what is going to be most appropriate for the school age child. Is it going to be, I see the answers conflicting already. You guys, all right. Um, developing, developing language skills, increasing fine motor skills like riding a tricycle, exploring rituals or peer group socialization. This is Let's Talk NCLEX. Let's Talk NCLEX. Come on and put your answers up. Come on and put your answers up. And again, you guys, we're talking about the school age child. Think about what you remember from what I just told you, <laughs> from exactly what I just told you. And if you, if you find yourself struggling with these kinds of questions, it's all right, uh, because the questions are meant to show you your weak areas, okay? They're meant to show you your weak areas so you can go back and focus on the content. So the correct answer is going to be number four, peer group socialization, peer group socialization. And again, guys, this is a really generic NCLEX question just asking you to identify where the school age child is. So remember, when you're talking about the school age child, they love to be amongst their peers in groups, socializing, competitive. They want to know who's the tallest, who's the fastest, who, who's the, yeah, like that is what they're into. So here we have here, if we look at the other choices, they're they're not age appropriate. Yes, they're they're not age appropriate. So number one, um, developing language skills. Well, that's something that you're going to do in babies. You're going to focus on um, speech and language in in toddlers, right? They're getting their first words. Increasing the motor skills, like riding a tricycle. So right there, like riding a tricycle, lets you know that by the time you're seven and nine years old, you are able to negotiate a tricycle. You should definitely be on something a little bit more difficult, uh, challenging to navigate. Um, expl explaining rituals. You guys who have been studying with me, you know that you see the rituals more in the preschoolers, right? So the rituals are more like, okay, the preschoolers need to have a bedtime story every night, right? They only like to eat spaghetti every day. You know, so the rituals you're not going to see in the school age child as you would the preschoolers. OK. All right. Um, so here's another uh, let's talk in Here's another let's talk in question. I got this one and um, I want to switch gears just a little bit. Somebody sent me this question and said, hey, Regina, do you need to wear all the PPE when entering a client's room? Or does it depend on what you are going to do? What you are going to do? This is a really great question. Love when you guys reach out to me. Uh, here we go. All right. So I like this one and I'm not going to explain it to you. I'm going to have you to do it. Let's do it. <laughs> a nurse is caring for a client with C. difficile. She needs to give the client a fresh pitcher of water which intervention is most appropriate, select all that apply. Oh my goodness. So we got the scenario, we got a client with C. diff, the nurse needs to give a fresh pitcher of water, which intervention is most appropriate. So you guys just doing this question, you should already know the answers before you even look at the choices. The choices are number one, wearing gown and gloves for care, Two, wearing gloves for medication. Three, wearing gown for IV care. Four, wearing N95, which is a mask, when entering the room. Five, wearing gloves when giving an IV. Or six, washing your hands before and after care. So this is a select all that apply. One or more options can be correct. What is going to be the best? What is going to be the best for for the nurse to do when you're entering into a patient's room with C. difficile? 
C difficile. And remember, if you choose a wrong answer, you get the whole thing wrong. So that's what makes these um, questions, select all that apply, so content heavy. If you know the isolation precautions for C difficile, you can pick this one, no problem. You can pick this one, no problem. All right. So thank you guys for doing Let's Talk NCLEX. This is a really good question. All right. Let me reveal the correct answers. I see many different choices coming in, but there are only two options that are correct. And I'm going to reveal them to you right now. They are, bam, number one and number six. Did you get this one? Did you get it? Number one, wearing gloves and gown for care, hands down, no questions asked. You got a patient with C. difficile. When you go into that room, you need to wear gloves and gown for care. If you pick number two, wearing gloves for medication, that's not going to be correct. That's not going to be the appropriate isolation precaution. What is the isolation precaution for C. difficile? Everybody say it. One, two, three. Try it again. Mark, participate this time. C. difficile, what is the isolation precaution? One, two, three. Universal. Universal. One, two, three is contact precautions. So when you have contact precautions, you need to make sure that you have on what? Okay, you need to have on a gown and gloves. If you pick number two, wearing gloves for medication, well, then that means you won't have on your gown. That means you won't be in contact precautions. If you pick number three, wearing a gown for IV care, this this disqualifies this, this that you shall have on gloves. That's not contact precaution. Four, wearing an N95 mask when entering the room, that may sound great, but that is actually not contact precautions. That's respiratory precautions. We can't do that. And then number five, we have wearing gloves when giving an IV. Well, it is the same as not being fully covered. So again, that's not going to be contact precautions. The only one that you can do is number one, wearing gloves and gowns. And then number six, yes, 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 yes washing your hands before and after care. That is going to be appropriate, all right? So this is one of those things, this is one of those things that yes, NCLEX will surely, it will surely present you with these kind of scenarios. You have to be able to maintain your, um, you have to be able to maintain your cleanliness for contact precautions with different patients. So here's some notes I have put here for you guys. I like to go by the C CDC recommendation um, for contact precautions. Number one is to ensure that your patient is in the proper place. And that means that you have the correct space for a patient who is diseased. Um, and also, if you have to put that patient with another patient for contact precautions, you can do, but you have to balance out the risks of putting two patients together. And you guys know I, I address cohorting in the DVD program. Another thing is when you have, when you have um, PPEs for contact precautions, you have to use gown and gloves for all interactions with the patient. It doesn't matter what you're doing. So NCLEX saying, oh, well, you're just giving the client, you know, some sunglasses or turning the TV. It doesn't matter if you're entering into that patient's environment and they have a contagious infectious disease. Make sure that you're covered because you never know. You can get in there and you can say, here is the picture of water you requested. And the patient says, well, can you scratch my back? And, you know, so you just have on everything that you need when you go in there. All right. Um. Clients with contact precautions, uh, you limit their transport. And uh, four, you're using disposable patient equipment. So you're keeping things that after the patient touches them, you throw them away. You're not going to wash them or clean them off. And then five, you prioritize cleaning. You prioritize cleaning. So here, I guess the, the, the thing that we had to remember is that when you're entering a patient's room, your PPE is for your protection against that patient. 
and anything that that patient has come in contact with. So it doesn't matter um, if you're hanging an IV medication or if you're giving water, you need to have on all of your PPE. And if you pick an answer choice that lists just one of them, then it assumes that you will not put the other ones on. So select all that apply questions. They're not just a free for all. Like they're not just, well, this looks good. I'm gonna throw this one in there. No, they're intentional. They're intentionally difficult for a reason. And so you have to consider if, and, and this is how I like to think of select all that apply questions. You guys know that. You have to consider, is this true about the circumstance? And so, that's how I want you guys to think of it. All right. Um, congratulations to those of you guys uh, who are passing NCLEX. What if it was gloves and gown for IV care? Would that be correct? Yes, I, Ayana, that would be correct. You need to have on gloves and gown. One of the choices did say gloves and gown for care, for any kind of care. And so that's why that one, number one, was correct over the others. OK, so you guys got this. I love Let's Talk NCLEX because it, it allows me to pinpoint a certain spot on the exam. And you guys can just test to see whether you know it or you don't know it. I hope you guys enjoyed this Let's Talk NCLEX. I hope you did. Um, we are paying for NCLEX. Oh, yes, we are paying for your NCLEX exam. And so right now I have the pleasure I had the pleasure of announcing this week's winner. This week's winner, oh, it is mm -hmm. nurse, future nurse F. Lucas. She is an RN student from Huntington, West Virginia. Oh, nurse Lucas, you don't have to worry about where the money is coming from to take your NCLEX exam because I have it for you. So check out this um, email that Mark is going to send you and the great thing about Nurse Lucas is that she recently just purchased the package. Literally, I don't even know if the package has made it to her yet, but she'll get an email saying, hey, you invested in yourself. We want to invest in you guys. So every week, again, we will be picking a winner. And um, I am so excited, <laughs> so excited uh, to be a part of this giving back community. Remar Nurses, we have a wonderful, we have a wonderful um, heart for giving back. And so thank you so much for everybody that is supporting the family. Thank you for all your testimonials. Thank you for your questions and your studying. And I see people posting questions in the Facebook group. Hey, y'all, which I think the answer to this question is. And so it's tremendous. It's tremendous. And I love spending my time with you. Mondays is the highlight of my week here in the office because we get to come together and do some Monday motivation and let's talk NCLEX. Stick around, we have some more exciting things coming. Remark Review could actually be in a city near you, near you. I got a really great question here. Duke says, hmm, how do I enter into the contest? It's simple. I'm just looking for people who purchased the DVD self-study package, like people who invested into themselves and said, you know what? I'm gonna do the six week challenge. I'm looking for six week challengers. I'm looking for people that said, I'm gonna do the six week challenge. And literally, I'm just picking, I'm just picking from the people because um, to invest in yourself, to invest in yourself is a demonstration that you're all in for your NCLEX. And I'm all in for your NCLEX. So I'm looking for people to be on that team, um, essentially. Oh, and that's a great question. So the DVD self-study package, unlike, unlike <laughs> NCLEX materials, not like $400, $500, our prices have always been the lowest in the industry. Seriously, I know you can spend close to $2,000, $3,000 preparing for NCLEX. Our DVD package is only $289. It's $289. It's for six weeks of studying. Um, again, it comes with four lecture DVDs. The things I do when I go to classes and I do live classes, um, typically I'll do a two-day class in the city, but the DVD program is literally six weeks worth of studying. And so people always ask, hey, Regina, do you do private tutoring? Um, can you come to my house? Can you, can, you, can you call me on the phone? 
I created the DVD program to replicate private instruction with me. So those who have the product, they say, it's like you're in my home. And I saw something on the Facebook page today that was so funny. It was like a vacuum cleaner. And then it was myself on the TV. Candace, I think that was you. And it said, cleaning the floors with Regina or something like that. And I'm like, yes, that is what I wanted with that DVD package. I wanted to literally be in your home every day. So you don't have to wait. You don't have to wait um, till Mondays if you have that DVD program. We're hitting that NCLEX information every day for six weeks. And so I love to do this because I it's, it's like this new thing that I'm doing. And it just puts into perspective the price of your nursing license. So the DVD program is $289, $289 for six weeks. That's $48 a week, $48 a week. That is literally $6.80 a day, $6.80 a day. That is like um, a meal at Chipotle or Starbucks or I don't know, whatever. Is your nursing license worth that to you? Do you have $6 to contribute to studying for NCLEX? That's it. And so you really, you really have to see the big picture of what it means. And I think there's some nurses on here that can speak to uh, speak to what it's like having your nursing license and being able to have access to a wonderful job and, um, you know, paid time off and all these good things and vacations and all, all these things that, you know, the ability to have. I When I was in Jamaica, there was literally a nurse in there I met two nurses in Jamaica just there on vacation. And I was just like, wow, you know, wow. Consider your life after you get your license and how awesome it will be. And then make the investment to do what you have to do. So I'm challenging you guys to consider the $6.80 as an investment in you. Um, yes, Candace, I gotcha. I gotcha. It, it really is. It really is. So, um, Congratulations. Yes, you 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 so will. Like everything that you're investing into yourself, you will make that money back hand over foot, hand over foot. You guys know there is a world, there's a global shortage of people who have your experience, who have your knowledge, who have your craft. You are so needed right now in this world. What are you waiting for? What are you literally waiting for? So that's our question for this week, because the person in control has to do the work, has to make the sacrifices, has to be dedicated every day. And is it easy? No. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. But it's not easy. Only you can do it. So do what you need to do. Uh, and we'll be here at Remar Review waiting, waiting for you, waiting to celebrate you guys, because that's what we do. Um, so I'm still rocking my Jamaica. Uh, I'm still rocking my Jamaica armband because it was such an amazing experience. Thank you so much again for everybody that came out to that. Hundreds of nursing students, 700 nursing students came to my class in Kingston. Um, it's just record breaking. I should have had Guinness World Book of Records there because literally nobody has ever seen anything like that before. But don't worry, because I will uh, be doing it again over and over and over again uh, until everybody on this planet knows about Remar Review. So, hey, Nurse nurse Sack. Hi, Miss Regina. I took my exam last Friday and found out I passed yesterday. I use only Remar and I made it on my second try. God bless you in Remar. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much for jumping on here. Uh, nurse, hey, this is testimony season. Nurse, Nurse Odie. Thanks, Regina. I pass in class. Congratulations, Nurse Lisa. Congratulations to you. It's Monday motivation. <laughs> no, listen to this. Uh, Latanya says, my husband says that Regina controls my life. <laughs> if she can wake me up out of my sleep asking me questions. Too funny. Too funny funny. It's not my intention. I just really have such a good time. I do have such a good time um, making NCLEX information a joy. Hey, Nurse Lily Ann. Hi, Regina. Thank you so much. I passed my NCLEX RN with 75 questions. 
this was my third try, huh? Glory be to the most high. I'm right with you there. Just wanted to say to everyone, I invested in myself and brought the DVD package, which came with the quick facts. That whole package is just amazing. Look up things you don't know, understand the content and trust yourself. I like that. Amazing, amazing. Here we go. Work hard, be consistent, and P-R-A-Y. Trust and have faith in God. I also want to thank the Remar family for all their encouragement and prayer. Hashtag don't give up. Hashtag Remar nurse. Hashtag Remar is dope. I like that. Wow. Wow. Those are words. Those are words that I really just can't follow. I mean, real life inspiration right there. So I'll just say the only thing left to say to you guys um, which you already know what time it is. Pow! We can, we will, we must pass in clex. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.